back in the air. And he's going to house it. It's amazing. Absolutely amazing. What's going on, everybody, and welcome to another Angle of Pursuit podcast, your fantasy football, sports betting, and NASCAR home. Brian Twining, it is week one. We are talking actual games. We are Uh, just days away. We were sitting here recording this on a Monday afternoon, Uh, probably going to release every Tuesday morning this episode um, for each and every football season. But before we dive into what we're doing and how it's going and all that stuff, um uh, how excited are you for for week one dude it, football never ceases to amaze me in terms of the the spot in my heart that it holds because i say it all the time we get to march madness college basketball is like my favorite sport but there is just something about especially this opening weekend of the nfl with the fact that they play i mean now it's like four days a week but the fact that you get a single day of just an all-day action-packed loaded schedule of football and gambling and fantasy like there is nothing like it i am beyond excited to do this i have way too much money invested in week one betting lines right now so i mean i'm ready to go yeah yeah uh 100 on board with you uh have my I have my one final home league draft today. I have one more on Wednesday. Um, so I'm still finishing out my my fantasy football drafting schedule. That's um, cutting it close there. Wednesday before uh, the Thursday dude, game. It, the You know, the wait to the last possible second to get all those injuries out of there. Yeah, um, yes. You know, I'm, I'm ready. To, I've been drafting since May, so I'm I'm good there. <laughs> um I got we got a whole weekend of college football to wet our whistle to get us excited. Oh, that was that was Thursday. glorious. So one more game tonight. That's super fun. Uh, we obviously had our NASCAR uh, race yesterday, which congrats to you on on the Denny Hamlin call winning outright. But yeah, you're right. There's something special about oh. about NFL and about Week One and all that good stuff. So our kind of game plan for for the week for the season is. On Tuesday mornings, we'll have kind of an overall look at the at the betting board, give you some games that we're looking at right now that we're trying to get down on. Uh, other games we'll be monitoring, other things we're monitoring. We'll talk news, we'll talk other information, anything that can help uh, you at the betting window. And then on Thursday, Brian and I will talk our best bets. We'll have some player props. We'll have um, all kinds of good nuggets for you to take into the weekend. Uh, but before we dive into anything, Brian, I do want to mention... You know, Brian and I are not experts. Like that, we know if we won every single bet, we wouldn't be sitting here doing this content. That's so don't, right. So if you want to blindly follow us, like that's that's your prerogative. But our goal here is to give you information, give you our thoughts, um, and hopefully make you a better better. Uh, that sounds weird, but a, a <laughs> more more uh, more consistent, more winning, better. Uh, give you our thoughts, give you our feels, um, and and you kind of take our information and and do what you will with it. Don't bet anything you're not willing to lose. Exactly. Um, you know, take take set your set yourself an allowance each and every week. Bet that amount. If you lose it, cool. If you win, awesome. Do do not chase the no. losses. That is no, the worst no, no, mistake no. you can make. No, that is that is the number one tip. Find yep. your card. The bet the the. I will say, obviously, with these lines, you know, as we dive into today, they've been out for a while, so they're pretty stagnant at this point. Yeah. But the sooner you can get in on a number, usually the better, especially if you have a strong feeling about it. Yes. Um, the longer you, the, the betting market is a really efficient market. And as the week goes along, the books are taking money from both sides. They're seeing where the pros are coming in. They're seeing where the public's coming in. They're making decisions based on people who win consistently, not necessarily who bet the most money. Um, and they're moving the number accordingly. So by, so if you're waiting until Sunday morning, I, uh, by all means, if that's how you want to do your process, go for it. Uh, but you are missing out on some good numbers. You are missing out on some good juice. Um, a lot of times you're laying more money to to bet that number or, um, you know, just missing out on 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 things that could, in, in theory, make you uh, make you a winning number. So Brian and I will talk about numbers we're betting today. We'll talk to you about kind of, like I said, lines we're keeping an eye on. 
um, and, and kind of where we would jump in and where we would jump out. Cause uh, that's, that's more important. You know, you may not yep. think the difference between three, three and a half is, is that big of a difference, but um, it really is. And don't, don't get too enamored with betting a team. Um, you will, uh, you, you know, that that's how you fall into some traps. So just wanted to get that caveat out of the way before we dive into anything. And all right, let's take a week one first look. We get to talk about actual football. Um, and, and let's start on the Thursday night game because I think that that is one of the benefits of doing our preview a little earlier this year is we'll be able to talk more about those Thursday yep. nights. Usually they're not that great. Usually they're kind of whatever, uh, but there oftentimes is value. And this year, obviously, a massive game. Your Dallas Cowboys are on the road to face the uh, defending Super Bowl champion Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We were looking at the odds this morning. Both DraftKings and Bovada have moved to plus eight. Um, oh, man. Pretty much everywhere else is sitting around seven and a half. W- what's your thought with your Cowboys? This seems like a this seems like a number. Man, I I am kind of disappointed in myself because a few man, I want to say like two months ago now when we were initially talking about like our first leans and gambling like futures and week one lines. I, we saw the line first opened up at six and a half, just underneath a touchdown. And I was, I was actually banking on the public betting Dallas and getting this line a little bit closer to, you know, the four and a half, five range, yeah. but it's gone the complete opposite direction, especially with the news of Zach Martin for the Cowboys yeah. in all likelihood missing. Now he has not been ruled out yet, but it's looking like he's going to miss. I mean, what's that going to do to the Cowboys running game? And with Tampa getting all 22 starters back from last season's Super Bowl team, I I have a really hard time believing that Dallas is going to be able to keep up in this game. I mean, especially late with their defense. It's I laying eight in the opening weekend with two teams who, yeah, Tampa's returning everyone, but it's you had a full off season. Maybe they've made some tweaks. Maybe the Cowboys made some tweaks. Like it's really hard laying that number. Uh, for the first game of the year. It, so I'll probably stay away from the line myself and go more towards like, you know, player props or like the total, which is currently sitting, you know, pretty dang high yeah. for between 50 and 52, depending on where you look. And Thursday games are normally crap. I know this is the first game of the year, but I mean, like yeah. Thursday mm-hmm. games traditionally do not put up a ton of points. So yeah, it, I'm looking mention, leaning I, under right now. Yeah, I will mention per- betting percentages, but it's all based. To, so, and, and that's the thing too is you want to be weary of that. Yeah, um, people might bet one side in the more earlier in the week with lower limits, hoping to get the line to move, then then hammer the other side to kind of really get the so- get down on the number they want. Uh, but as of right now, sixty percent of your bets are on the over, despite sixty four percent of the money coming in on the under. So, um, the 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 money is on the side you are leaning, Brian. Um, and as you mentioned, we don't have to bet every single game. There's 16 games. Yep. There's, we got 16 weeks or 17 weeks now, plus all the playoffs. Like we got plenty of time to place bets. So if you have a strong feeling, obviously dive in. But if you only want to bet one or two games, I think that is absolutely great and and smart. And as you bet over time, um, one of the things you'll learn is to not bet 16 games and just to bet three <laughs> if you want to win. Now, if you want to just yeah. have in the game on every game and bet five bucks, you know, go go nuts, bet every side, bet every total, bet all the player props. Um, just you know, that if that's if that's how you want to spend your spend your fun money. But if you're trying to 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 turn a profit and and, yeah. and make some make some decent money week over week, um, you need to be hitting about 53% or better. Um, and you're not gonna do that betting every single game. I will say on that note right there, like most of the plays that we post are the leans that we feel the most confident in, but don't be fooled on my Sunday card. I have an astronomical amount of wagers out there just because it is so much fun to have some kind of skin in the game and have something, some rooting interest in every single one of these matchups. So just know, like we said, we are not experts they're the ones we post are our leans most confident ones but we're just like you we're going out there to enjoy it have fun and hopefully make a few bucks at the end of the game and brian and i are betting the games we're talking about so we're not just you know giving you giving you blank blank uh, no no no, head over to aop podcast on instagram we'll be posting our betting card every probably every friday um we're recording our final show on thursday i'll try and post that on friday 
uh, maybe early morning to, to the middle of the afternoon sometimes. So you can take a look at that. But as I mentioned, joining us uh, for these shows earlier in the week are going to help you get a better number, help you get an idea of where our head's at. And then as the week rolls along, we might get a better feeling. We might have a different new information and we'll we'll go from there. Brian, uh, I, we talked Cowboys box. I think we're both on the same page. If anything, look at the under, but might be good just to sit back on the couch, enjoy the game, and, and watch it. Because as you mentioned, Tampa's defense is awesome. Maybe, you know, we've been drafting the Cowboys offense all fantasy year, and there's a lot to yep. like about that. But the defensive side of the ball is a real problem. Um, maybe, you know, Dak and company are enough to kind of get a little bit backdoor cover late. Uh, maybe you let Tampa get out to a big, big lead and then kind of live bet it and try and catch maybe double digits. But as you mentioned, Excuse me. As you mentioned, going all the way out to eight, that's there's a lot going on there, and I think it's just a number to avoid. Yeah, I will say real quick before we get off that game, uh, sure. DraftKings right now, if you have DraftKings in your state and you're able to get on there, they're offering a Tampa Bay boosted bet where you can get the Bucks at plus 73. Yeah. I don't know what the limit is. Um, I mean, it's it's minus lot, 110 juice. Yeah, a lot so, of sports books are giving out insane offers. Yes. For week um, one, I know there's. I think DraftKings also has one where if you bet a dollar on any game, you you get um you get a two hundred dollar bonus if it whether it wins or loses. <laughs> you know, William Hill is doing the same thing. FanDuel is doing. Take the same advantage thing. of those now. Take advantage of those if they're in your area. Um, yes. And shop around if you have opportunities to go to multiple books because. That's another great way to find an advantage. And, you know, you may see the Cowboys plus eight and the Cowboys plus seven and a half. And if you really like Dallas, take that extra hook. Or if you can get the Cowboys, you know, plus seven and a half minus 105 instead of minus 115, you know, that's another way to take advantage. So um, we'll try and we'll try and drop nuggets like that as we as we roll along. And and as you know, as we do these, especially on Mondays, if you have thoughts, if you have questions, if you have games you like, drop them in the comments. And then when we come back on Thursday, uh, we can answer any questions, talk about the games you guys want us to specifically hit on uh, and all that good stuff. Uh, Brian, I was looking at the board this week. Um, and those dogs are barking. Those yes, dogs sir. are, are like, I don't, I, I know it's week one. I know we have strong feelings about what a team may or may not be. We have to remember Jacksonville last year, won their first game of the year <laughs> and complete went to, went on to lose their next 15 to lock up that number one pick. So, and they'd be uh, eventual playoff team, the Colts week one, right, too. So let's right. not forget uh, about yeah, that. A double digit winning Colts playoff team. Um, so there's a lot to look at. There's a lot of teams getting a lot of, a lot of juice, a lot of, uh, numbers have moved significantly. Obviously we, you know, at, this is, I think this is going to be one of the more dramatic li uh, line shifts you're going to see all season, just because these numbers have been out. The, the information has changed. Um, you know, you look Colts opened up as a, speaking of the Colts, Colts opened up as a two and a half point favorite against Seattle. Now they're a two and a half point underdog. Obviously the Carson Wentz injury, you know, what Quentin Nelson getting banged up. A lot of stuff's happened. Um, but now there's potential value with the home team. Uh, you know, the Texans, you know, like I know the Texans are terrible, but you know, who's also terrible. Jacksonville, yes, Jacksonville. Jacksonville is also terrible. And you're getting two and a half points in week one with a home team. There's a lot of value. Is there any team specifically, like home underdogs that you're looking at that you think there could be something there. Well, like you said, I, I like Houston in this spot with the, with the field goal with just, I, I think their offense at for as not explosive, it's going to be, I think you can see them be decently efficient with having yeah. now a mobile quarterback. They have five freaking running backs back there. Yeah. Um, so I, I think they can keep that game pretty close. But the one that like for me is probably the most difficult game to pick. And I'll probably lean with the home dog. That's got to be Washington currently yeah. sitting as like a half point or a point dog at home to the Chargers who I love the Chargers. They, if you watched our Super Bowl preview show where we took a hundred bucks to the book, Chargers were one of my bets. I think they have a good chance that their defense can be put together completely. They stay healthy. Offense gets rolling. But this Washington team with full off season, they have Fitz Magic now. I it's starting to look like Curtis Samuel is going to return for Week One. Uh, Dynamy Brown is going to get worked into the offense a little bit more. D 
that defense is just so good going up against, yes, a retooled Chargers offensive line, but I mean, it's going to be the first real game action that those five have had together. I, I love Washington in this spot as the home dog. It, it, it's, it's one of my favorite plays of the week. Totally, totally agree. Um, on the home dog front, I like the Colts. I like that they're getting almost a field goal. I'm optimistic. I'm, I'm not betting it yet. I'm optimistic that I can get the full three. If I don't get it, I might just not. I, I might just stay away from that game. But if I can get the full three with the Indy team who, yes, there's questions at quarterback, but they have – they have a really good offensive line when healthy, and they should they, all signs point to it being should healthy. Be healthy. Taylor's back there. Their defense is still super solid, um, and I think they'll be really competitive. And I know we like Seattle and Dallas and a lot of these teams for their fantasy purposes, but we're yep. talking about you know they have to go four quarters, they have to play both sides of the ball, um, and you know there there's a lot to like about what the Colts are doing even with their question marks you know over the course of the season I don't expect them to win a ton of games at this point but I think they can absolutely hang within the three and and keep it competitive not just that though uh on Seattle too we haven't had an update on uh Dwayne Brown yeah as whether or not he's gonna play and if Seattle's missing their best offensive lineman and the the blindside blocker for Russell Wilson that's gonna be a long day for Russ yeah, especially with that defense with DeForest Buckner <laughs> with Darius Leonard, like pieces getting after the quarterback. Yep. Um, I also like Cincy. I, I don't know what to do with Minnesota. I like I feel like Minnesota's either gonna be pop up and be awesome and like eleven in or eleven and what eleven uh, I'm gonna get all confused with the extra game. Eleven, 11 and, six, and six. Twelve and five, or they're gonna be terrible. Um I like the Bengals getting points at home. Uh, once again, you know, you're getting a full field goal there and, and shop around on that one because you can get minus one of five at most places. DK and um, another uh, place have it at like heavily juiced. And I don't want no I don't want a piece of that. Let's talk about the biggest game of the week, Brian. Kansas City Chiefs minus six versus the Cleveland Browns rematch of the AFC title game. We got Baker. We got Patty Mahomes. Um, this is going to be a really fun game. Yes, sir. Not necessarily one I'm going to want to bet, I don't think. But um, I know a lot of people are going to be intrigued by this number. Where's your head at with this game overall? Honestly, I'm hoping it kind of sneaks a little bit lower than this because I, I want to bet Kansas City money line, And it, I don't normally lay the kind of juice that they're going to. I mean, they're going to be probably one to two or close to that. Might Maybe one to two and a half, but yeah. Andy Reed coming off of the Super Bowl loss that they had, having an entire off season to prepare for this, yeah. knowing it was against the team that gave them problems. I just do not see a world that Kansas city loses week one. See, I don't know what to do with the chiefs. And I think, you know, last year we saw it a lot where this is a team built to win Super Bowls. This is a team to compete for the, the highest level trophies True. And everybody knows it. The defense is better. The offensive line is much improved. But last year, they just kind of went through the motions and did enough to win games. And they were able to turn it on at the end if they needed to, keep it close enough. And they failed to cover, like, I think 75, 80% of their games. I wonder if we see well, another season like that or if, uh, if the Super Bowl They had lost. some pretty damn big lines, though. Let's yeah, not... well, yeah. But, I mean... That that was warranted, right? Based on yeah. what they had done, based upon um, expectations. But you know, after losing to Tampa, do they you know beat the brakes off of everybody and cover these numbers with ease, or do they kind of do what they need to do, get in position again, and hopefully have a have a better result when they get to the Super Bowl? I I actually think that this is going to be. Uh, the latter and they, they are going to come out here with a vengeance. They're going to be looking for, I mean, they need to get back into the conversation of being as good, if not better than Tampa. Cause as of right now, everyone in the NFL fans alike everywhere, Tampa Bay is the class of the NFL and Kansas city was once that team just, just two years ago. Yeah. And now everyone's just kind of putting them to the side. You know, I mean, this team's made the super bowl two years in a row. Could have been it could have been like four years, three years in a row now that they could have been the potential Super Bowl champion. Yep. I Kansas City to me is one of those teams that they're just kind of lying in the weeds and people 
we're not really even considering them when you take into account the fact that during our Super Bowl show, neither of us took them. Uh, everyone's betting somebody like Cleveland's out well, of the it's, AFC, it's, like you know, Baltimore's how, a trendy that's pick. That's kind of how futures work, though, right? Because um, you see numbers like seven to one on a team to win the Super Bowl, and you could get that most of the season. The numbers you're looking for are the 30 to ones, 40 to ones, even like, or even like 25, 20, 25 to one. You're looking for that big payday on a team that you think could take a leap. You're looking for Tampa Bay last year, right? I, even though they had Brady, their their number was still a little bit longer than people expected. And the slow start, you were able to get a better number if you took it in the first couple of weeks. So it's hard to get super excited about a team that's, you know, if not the betting favorite right there. Um, so I, I mean, I understand that from, from that perspective, but like, I'm pulling up the, uh, the Super Bowl odds right now just to get an idea of where we currently sit, but like, it's hard for people to get excited, um, about teams that, you know, the expectations are the high. I mean, they, they are still the betting favorites of five to one. Like I, I like Kansas city a lot. And I think, you know, if you want to bet that now thinking they'll be in the Super Bowl. That's fine, but I just it's hard to get on board at that price, even with a team as good as this. Yeah, it it was really difficult for me to bet Tampa, but in terms of like the their paths, I just mm-hmm. like e- even Kansas City, as good as the AFC has gotten, they're 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 probably the best team in the AFC that were you know, I, I feel like we're discounting how good they've actually been oh, the yeah. last two years. They've they have been like historically good. They're up there with the Patriots, those greatest show on turf Rams teams, um, some of, some of the greatest teams of all time. And their offensive line got better, and their defense it got improved. Um, so yeah, there there's very very good reason why they are uh, currently sitting there. As for this game, probably going to be another one I just sit back and watch because I, I don't feel like I have a strong angle. If I had to bet it, I would take the Chiefs and expect them to to rebound in a big way, especially after Mahomes had to leave that AFC Championship game with an injury, and then they you know they lose to Tampa Bay two weeks later in the Super Bowl. Um, they're ready to, to remind teams how good they can be. As much as I like the Browns' trajectory and think they could absolutely have, be there uh, yes. come season's end and, and, and face the Chiefs again to go to the Super Bowl. Let's talk about a few games that we're going to bet now. Brian, have you looked, uh, have you made any bets as of what, Monday morning, um, you know, 11 o'clock West Coast time? Have you, is, do you have any, well, I guess the week one lines are, are have been up for a while. So I guess what sides um, have you got down on uh, or, you know, how ha- bets have you made? Well, I, I made some week one bets as soon as the Lions first guy dropped. I think it was like a month and a half ago, and I don't even remember what they were. I, I know for a fact I, I liked New England immediately at home against Miami. I think that line's kind of taken a, a turn. It's up to three in most places in, in favor of New England. And um, I think that's that's probably a money line game just because Miami's defense is going to be so good. So yeah. I'm, I'm staying away from that one, but... Getting the Saints at home plus four and a half, like I, I'm comfortable taking New Orleans with a with a field goal at home yeah. again against yeah Green Bay is good, but let's not forget New Orleans has a good defense. They have one of the best offensive lines in the NFL. If the talk out of the out of the Bayou is real and Jameis Winston has learned how to limit turnovers, this team is. St- still going to be one of the most efficient offenses in the NFL. They're not going to make mistakes. Once again, the caveat being James Winston um, and them getting points playing as the home team in Jacksonville, which is still going to be all saints fans in the heat. Aaron Rodgers, I guess I, they posted something like has a poor record in temperatures above like 90 with so much humidity. So of course they chose Jacksonville to play this game in. So yeah, Tampa, I mean, new Orleans getting that much. It, That's a no-brainer. New Orleans is the game I've already bet, plus four and a half. Yep. Uh, I I love that number. I think this is a field goal game either way. As you mentioned, this defense is incredible. The um, the, the, the offensive line will be solid. They can run the hell out of the ball. You know, between Kamara and whether it's Tony Jones or Latavius Murray or, you know, I'm sure we'll work in some Taysom Hill. I think it'll be competitive. I think it'll be... 
back and forth. I think both teams will will produce some points. I think the both defenses will be solid. Um, but I, I, I that number does not make sense to me, even with it, you know, not really officially being a home game for New Orleans. Yeah, I the the other game that for me that I was looking at and I've been betting it is the uh, the total in Arizona and Tennessee. It's currently sitting at fifty two. Yeah. I'm I'm betting that up. Like I'm take, taking that over all day. D- Arizona is down to a veteran corner signed off the streets and a rookie, I believe fourth rounder at starting at corners against Julio Jones, AJ Brown. It Tennessee to me is like my, my favorite team total prop play right now. So I like them. They're 27 and a half. I mean, you could get that right now. That's to me, uh, that's one of my locks of the week. Uh, it's a little preview there. And then the, just the total itself, knowing that Arizona is probably going to be trailing, they're not going to be able to stop Tennessee. So they're going to have to air it out. And they're, they're skill players of Rondell Moore, AJ Green, DeAndre Hopkins, Chase Edmonds. Like this game to me is going to be a boat race both ways. It's going to be a fun, exciting, possibly the highest scoring game of the week. Yeah, no, I, I'm with you. I think both these offenses are going to be really, really uh, up tempo. I think they're going to move the ball. Obviously, Arizona is going to want to do their thing. Um, I'm curious to see what Tannehill looks like. I expect at this point, since he's already been released, that he'll, he'll be fine to go uh, post COVID. But you never know that things get wonky. As you mentioned, there's a couple totals I like. Um, Jets Panthers, I think could be one of the sneaky highest scoring games of the week. Um, both defenses aren't great. Both offenses should be improved. I really love what Joe Brady's doing and, uh, my Sam Bradford to win MVP ticket is going to need a, a nice little jump start from the beginning. You mean um, Darnold. Darnold. What? Not Sam Bradford. Did I say Sam Bradford? Man, I'm so excited <laughs> about, <laughs> well, I hope he's not Sam Bradford. That would be <laughs> Kyle's really living in the past. Good. Hey, uh, hey, if Sam Darnold puts up the completion percentage that Sam Darn or that Sam Bradford used to do, that'll be fantastic for Carolina. Yeah. The other game I'm looking at is the Giants Broncos over. I think both of these offenses are going to be really solid. Um, at least off the jump. And I think uh I think this game could be a little more interesting. 42, 41 and a half, you can get it. Um, I think that's a number that I could absolutely get on board with. I'm actually going the opposite direction in that game. I think that because New York over the last, I think it was like six or seven games, they were top 10 in the NFL and passing yards allowed and passing completion. And then when you got Denver getting Von Miller back, it's looking like Bradley Chubb isn't going to play for them or he he may or may not play, which is going to be a huge loss. But I mean, Denver's Denver's back seven is amazing. I just, I think New York's going to have an issue getting the ball down the field with Kenny Galladay missing so much time. So there's not a lot of time to develop any rapport with Daniel Jones. I don't really trust Jones in any situation. Um, and then Saquon Barkley's status is still it's trending in the right direction, but how much is he actually going to play? And then behind him, it's, it's Devonta Booker. I mean, I, I think this is going to be one of those like 20 to 17 games. So I I'm leaning the under, but it's not something I'm, getting crazy with it's a sleepy little game that's not going to make too many tvs i get it it makes sense i could definitely um, see that i can i can see it turning into a a, a higher scoring affair though because if, if bridgewater is airing it out to those amazing wide receivers and they jump out to a big lead then you're really going to have to see the giants have to push the pace yeah yep yeah. um okay brian we got in we looked at the board we looked at um the big game of the week we, uh, we, you know, we talked about games we're betting now, all that good stuff. We'll be back on Thursday to break down our best bets, to bet, break down our player props, update any key news going into the weekend, and give you our thoughts um, and get you ready for a full week one of the NFL season. I literally cannot wait. That's Brian Twining. I'm Kyle Robert. Make sure you follow us at AOP Podcasts on Instagram posting content there all the time, including our picks for the weekend. We'll talk to you all next time.